Hey, everybody. Final thoughts time for Bunny Kingdom. And I gotta say, I totally understand now, having played this, why it is so hugely popular. This is a big, evergreen, successful game for publisher Yellow. And, I mean, really, it should be no surprise. It's from designer Richard Garfield, Mr. Magic the Gathering, Mr. Robo Rally, Mr. King of Tokyo. And for a lot of people, Richard Garfield is Mr. Bunny Kingdom. For a lot of people, this is his magnum opus because it is so good. Uh, it is a an amazing card drafting game. I might almost go say so far as to say one of the better ones out there because of something that really is fairly unique to this game and that elevates it above the traditional card drafting experience. And that is the fact that, okay, every round I've got my hand of cards, somebody just handed me, and I'm trying to figure out which one it is, and it's always a tough choice because there's always at least a few cards you are desperate to have. But you gotta pick, you gotta pick. In other games, Seven Wonders, Sushi Go, most card drafting games, you pick one and hand the rest off. In this game, I can't, I cannot put into words just how liberating and satisfying and uh, empowering it is to pick two and then hand the rest off. This is ginormous because it means you can start comboing things together. You can start um, either you know really drilling down in one area or spreading out. It gives you so much more control over your cardboard destiny. I love it. And you know, off the top of my head. I'm sure this is not the only game. I'm sure there are several drafting games out there where you have your hand, you pick two instead of one. The only one I can think of is Isle of Cats. And Isle of Cats made my top ten games of last year. And I bet you it's going to make a lot of people's top tens this year. And while most people might think, oh, it's because of the wonderful cats and the great polyomino tetris type stuff, and all that stuff is great, I think a big part of why Isle of Cats is so universally loved is the same reason this game is so universally loved. Take your hand, pick two. I know it sounds so small, but it is so huge. It kind of shames other card drafting games that don't do this. And um, I'm so happy I've gotten to play this as a four-player game because we had so much fun playing that way. Um, and here's the problem. You don't get to do that in a two-player game. Money years. You uh, have to... You get that same hand of cards. And the weird thing is, oh, draw one more. And now play one for myself and destroy one. And um, so that means if you are playing this as a two-player game because you are constantly... I mean, relative to regular card drafting games, it's perfectly normal. You play one card every turn. But regular Bunny Kingdom, where you play two cards every turn, in the two-player game, it just feels very anemic. It's slow. It's patchy. You don't end up scoring anywhere near as many points. You don't end up quite as impressive with, like, your big Bunny Kingdoms. You said you have a whole bunch of smaller ones as a general rule. I mean, you still end up making a few times. And... I should say, I do not want to in any way imply that the two-player variant is bad. It is not. It is very, very good. But it is very, very different. And I think by giving up the double card draft, so much of the joy of this game is gone. Straight up gone and replaced by a more cutthroat, a more clinical, a more surgical and strategic game, because of course, with only one other player to draft back and forth, yeah, even though they're taking one and destroying one, it's still the same number of cards. Hey, you know what? Most of the cards I hand to you, they're going to come back to me. So I can make long-term plans that way. And that's a very standard thing in card drafting games. And I, we've got dozens of card drafting games that we adore as two-player games, and we generally tend to like them more because it's less tactical, it's more strategic. Yeah, I'm handing you five cards, I know four of them are going to come back to me. Now in this game, I'm handing you five cards, I know three of them are going to come back. And I know if you're paying attention to what I'm doing, you will target the one the one I'm desperate to come back. But hey, of those four, of those three that are coming back, chances are I'll still get something if I can think that far ahead that'll work. So it becomes a more long-term strategic game that really pushes you more. And, you know, elements enter the game like, well, I can't play this card right now. I can't reveal to you what I want. I got to be cool uh, because then you'll start denying me that card for the rest of the game if I'm too obvious about it. So there's more interesting strategy. It's a more strategic, deeper, more complex game at two players. It's certainly more complex because the rules are more complex. Don't forget, draw a card. Don't forget to trash one and, and uh, play one. Don't forget, there's a third uh, trashing deck because there's our play decks, but then there's also the discard deck. So there's it, the rules are more complex and bitty. The end results are nowhere near as fantastic. I mean, you, you won't get... You will not... 
You, I mean, you, you, I mean, you feel like you create a bunch of bunny fiefs, or bunny fiefs, instead of a bunny kingdom or two. Uh, unlike the regular player game, where even though there are more players and there's more land being grabbed, you still accomplish so much more in the same amount of time by playing two cards every turn. And here's the deal, folks. I say all this because <sighs> I don't think Bunny Kingdom is a caper for us as a two-player game. It's good, it's solid, but having played it as a four-player game. I don't find it as satisfying to play, and I now know that. Maybe if I'd never played it as a four-player game with my niece and nephews, Zane and Zoe, hey guys, uh, maybe if I hadn't played it that way, we'd find it a bit more attractive. But because we've experienced it at the higher player count, it's just kind of hard to go back to the lower player count. And here's the deal, folks. I know I'm not alone, because if you go on Board Game Geek and go to the variant section for Bunny Kingdom, there's like a half a dozen different um, proposed variants for how to try to make the two-player version of this feel more like the higher player counts. I don't think I have ever seen a game get that many two-player variants if it didn't already have, uh, that already had a good two-player variant in the box. And again, the two-player variant for this is excellent. It works really well. It just, like I said, robs, uh, for my taste, some of the fun, some of the, uh, the, you know, the satisfaction of being able to pull off really big moves. And I don't know if I appreciate it as much when I covered Isle of Cats last year, but I really appreciate it now. Isle of Cats and Bunny Kingdom before it benefit so greatly from changing that core card drafting rule of dr keeping only one card and getting that drip feed every turn. In this game, you double that drip feed and it just feels so great. And so I would highly recommend Bunny Kingdom for people who like card drafting and who like you know, uh, you know building up kingdoms and all that as a three or four player game. I'd recommend it as a two-player game if you're looking for a much more chess-like move, counter-move, constantly trying to one-up you and stop you. Because that's the thing. If you're playing a four-player game, yeah, I've got all these cards. And yes, I could... Oh, I can't let you have this one. But I don't want it. And I really want these two at a higher player count. And considering the fact none of these other cards are going to come back to me, or very unlikely they're going to come back to me, it's much more about grabbing what's good for you and it's less about the hate drafting. And again, I've played many games where I very much enjoy hate drafting. Um, but in this game, because I've been exposed to the higher player count, it's just hard to go back. And as cute and adorable as this is, it's not a keeper for us. I know there's an expansion that just recently came out, just last year for Bunny Kingdom. And I was so hoping that Mr. G would go back and um, rethink. Because, I mean, I'm sure he's aware that a lot of players would like the two-player experience to be something more akin to the four-player experience. But they didn't. I went and looked at the rules. They didn't. They, you know, it's it's uh, still the same thing. J take your reserve and just trash, 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 and go for smaller, more incremental moves instead of really cool, big, satisfying moves. Again, I, I I can't stress this enough. This is a great area control slash card drafting game for two for every player count two, three, and four. But you just got to know it's a very specific type of experience as a two player game, and not for nothing. There are some wonderful fan-made variants. You can go on Board Game Geek to the Bunny Kingdom variant. I, I read all of them. Uh, there were at least four, maybe more. And I thought, wow, any of these, any of these would be more fun than the official one. Um, and I know there's a lot of people coming. You know, we played this one. It's really awesome. And people are trying to come up with their own variants because Bunny Kingdom is great if you're looking for a specific type of gameplay experience at two. That's not what we're looking for. And so, unfortunately, it wasn't a keeper for us. But hey, guess what, Zane and Zoe? This is coming in the mail to you guys, and I hope you enjoy it, because I know you enjoyed playing it with us. And that's it, folks. That is Bunny Kingdom. Final thoughts. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye